I'm supposed to talk about what it's like to be a mentor. So a little of my background, this is my um, kind of my third year. I volunteered kind of part-time at Newport High School where I taught my first year. Um, and then when I moved to Issaquah, it just so happened that the mentors who started the Issaquah team um, decided they were done with the robotics team. They started it, they had some fun with it. Um, they were Microsoft programmers and you know, in their mid-30s they decided to retire. So, um, so they kind of gave it up, which was a nice opportunity to me for me going into that school and um, I'm a physics teacher. So robotics and physics kind of go hand in hand. It was a nice opportunity to kind of get my name out there. Because, I mean, personally, how many of us are teachers? Teachers? Um, okay, a couple of us. Um, I think kids really take teachers not so much classes. It's like, oh yeah, Mr. So-and-so's class is really fun, or Miss So-and-so's class is really fun. They tend to go for towards that. Um, so robotics was a nice opportunity to like, build a reputation at my school. Um, let's see. Yeah, so let's see. what do you need to run a robotics team? You need tools. Um, you guys are all rookie teams. So, our rookie year, they built a robot with hacksaws and a cordless drill. And you can get by with that, if that's what you have, and some wrenches. Um, so that's fine, if that's all you have, that's all you have. Um, talk to your shop guy. If you have a shop guy at your school, if you have an auto shop or a wood shop, try to get that guy involved as much as possible. He's got the tools you need, he's got the safety training that he's done with his shop kids. He can, if you can get him involved to train those kids with the safety and how to use those tools and access to them, um, you'll save yourself a lot of grief and it's very, very helpful that you can get your shop or your vocational people on board with your program. Um, I, myself, at Issaquah, um, yeah, you guys want to go there? You want to be in no, season? Here. Seven. Um, Issaquah High School right now is going through a massive remodel, and so I'm now out of my physics lab and teaching AP Physics in a portal, uh, which is really fun, and what we're making do. And then our shop guy, he went from like 3,000, 4,000 square feet to uh, two classrooms with a wall knocked down. So his shop is now the size of about this room, maybe a little more. So we're really pressed on space at my school. Um, so I actually went out, I spent a bunch of money on, I bought our own drill press, I bought our own bandsaw, and I bought our own um, belt sander. So we'll have those tools for robotics for us now, and only we use them so we don't have to go bag our shop guy for shop time and whatnot, which hopefully will make our lives a little easier. Um, money, you need Mr. money. Mr. Fernandez, uh, just yeah. about shop guy. Or right. shop. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what ways would you recommend to uh, begin to, you know, get some uh, buy-in from the shop folks and uh, participation. I mean, the curriculum for the year is already laid out, right? Yeah. So what kind of, um, you know, things can a person or can a team do to, to leverage some of that time and some of that cooperation? To, to get that guy to buy in, he's going to have the same kids in his class that are going to want to join robotics. Um, those kids are already the ones who want to use the drills and the power tools and build stuff. So they're going to be in his class already. Um, so you can kind of appeal to them like that, like, hey, half my kids are already in your class. Uh, it's going to be an extension of what you already do. Um, and that kind of relates. A lot of people, a lot of the shop guys, you know, they have their own stuff to do. They have their own extra trick activities that they volunteer their time for. And a lot of them just don't want any more extra stuff going on. So it, it is difficult to get that guy or gal involved. Um, Lobby them, go to your admin and be like, hey, I need access to these tools, I need like safety programs for my kids. Um, getting your admin behind you is important as well, we'll talk about that. But just try to uh, appeal to them in the fact that your kids and his kids are the same kids, at least half of them-ish. I mean, I know that most of my robotics kids have taken auto shop and taken wood shop. So they're already gone through his safety program, so they're already trained with those tools which is nice, and it'll make him feel a little more comfortable knowing that kids he trained are the ones in there working with the stuff. Um, you need money. You need lots of money, which is kind of scary. I think our team's budget last year was $22,000, uh, which is quite a bit. Um, how many got the OSPI grant? The 8,000 bucks, a couple of us, okay. Um, you can, grants are great. Um, the OSPI grant is really nice for starting rookie teams. I think you get up to like $8,000 to start that. That covers your initial $6,000 for your kit of parts and your registration fee. 
Uh, I wrote a grant last year for, through the Issaquah Schools Foundation, which is just kind of a kind of like a booster club, kind of like a PTA thing. Uh, it's their own foundation, and they gave me six thousand um, dollars for that initial registration, which was really nice because they are really all about um, at Issaquah. We've done a lot of work with them promoting science and technology in our community, and they're really on board with robotics now after a couple of years of working with them. And they've always donated some, a little bit here and there, a thousand bucks every year. Um, this year they really poured into it and they gave us that initial 6,000, which was really nice. Um, fundraising, I think Donna talked, did a whole thing on fundraising. You wanna fundraise as much as possible, you can always use more money. <laughs> uh, robotics is expensive. Um, You'd have the 6,000 registration, if you want to do another regional, it's 4,000, and then you can expect to spend at least $3,000 more on just parts. Stock aluminum, if you want to go for encoders, I mean, these are not cheap things um, that will cost you a lot of money. So fundraise, ASB, our, our ASB gives us $2,000 a year as a club, um, and that's just like initial funding, here you go, ASB for money for clubs. Uh, so make sure if you haven't done that yet, go talk to your ASB um, advisor and get your name on their list because they have money for clubs. You just have to ask for it. Time, your time. Um, this is the killer. This is, I think, what uh, is what keeps these programs going in schools is that people are willing to donate a lot of time for free. Uh, I last year I stopped counting after I hit 500 hours. And my ASB covered 80 of them. So I got paid for 80 hours and I easily put over 500. Um, but we don't do it for the money, we do it because it's fun and you actually get to learn a lot from the kids and they learn a lot from you. It's an amazing experience. Hi, welcome. Are you talking about mentors? Yes. Yeah, they don't. Um, Robert okay. Steele would not switch rooms. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so be be willing to put in lots of time, um, but it's worth it. Hundred percent worth it. Uh, organize. You need organization, especially for a first year rookie team. Uh, I was fortunate enough. I stepped into a pre-existing team, and so the difference between the way I organized my team and the way it was organized before I stepped in was. Mentor leadership and student leadership. Um, before we had total mentor leadership, it was kind of, this is what we need to do, this is how we do it. You kind of follow along and watch and learn, um, which is great, and the kids learn a lot that way, and you build a robot and you compete. Um, but I really feel that if you set up a student leadership, they will take more ownership in it, they will learn a lot more, they will have more pride in what they're doing, the first thing I did, mainly because I'm not very good, I wasn't very experienced as building robots, uh, it was my first year, just like, well, I'm interested in it, I have an idea of how to run things, but to be honest, the kids knew more than me the first year I was involved. So I initially said, okay, you guys need to set up a student leadership group that you guys decide on who your leaders are going to be. Um, they, the vice president, president, secretary, treasurer, blah, blah, blah. I've really tried to get them to pick cooler names, like engineering names, like program, uh, project manager and CFO and you know, like business type titles, but they just wanted to stick with president, vice president, director, <laughs> uh, whatever, that's their decision. 